In basic umpiring and the two umpire system, professional umpire Al Kaplan guides you through the basics of umpiring. You'll learn how to call safe or out. To call an out from this position, what we do is we stand straight up to use our height, we raise our right arm up, parallel to the ground, about shoulder length up, and we snap the wrist off. Make the fair or foul call. Use the two umpire system. I got third if he comes, Eddie! I got third! Ow! Work balls and strikes behind the plate. This is the pitch that you need to see as an umpire. Mike, can you see this pitch? Yes, I can. If Mike was to work lower, down by the catcher's And develop head. even more skills. <laughs> Vivid graphics will show you positioning and the mechanics of the two umpire system. The umpire's fundamental position is the set position and the starting point for the out and safe calls. Let's join Al Kaplan. To make a call as an umpire, what we need to do is get into a set position, a standard set position. Ed Hickox here is going to demonstrate for us. What we do is we take our feet and we spread them shoulder width apart so we're in a nice, comfortable position. 75% of our weight is on the balls of our feet so we're ready to move forward to any plays that we might need to go. From this comfortable position here, we bend at the waist, taking the thumbs on the inside of the knees and locking them in just above the knee. From here, he's stopped, he's set, his head is level, his eyes are level, and he's fixated on the play that he needs to call, which is moving. To call an out from this position, what we do is we stand straight up to use our height, we raise our right arm up, parallel to the ground, about shoulder length up, and we snap the wrist off. From here, that snap of the wrist is put in unison with voice. So an out call should look something like this. Set, call it. And that's your out call. The drill for set position and out call. These will be out. Go. Stop. Call it. Go. Stop. Call it. Go. Stop. Call it. All right, good job, guys. Good out calls. Also from this set position, we have to call a safe call. How we do this is basically a four-step process. What we do is we stand straight up using our height again, bringing our arms, one, out in front of our body. Two, we bring them out to the side, and we're going to put this together with voice. Three, we take them back to the front of our body, and four, we get back down to the set position. The call should look something like this. Set, call it. Three. And that's your safe call. The drill for the set position and safe call. These will be safes. Go. Stop. Call it. Shoot. Go. Stop. Call it. Shoot. Go. Stop. Call it. Shoot. All right, good strong safe calls, guys. We've talked about the regular set position. Now we're going to talk about the standing set position. The standing set position is used in the outfield to judge plays or plays that are across the diamond that we can't get right on top of. To do this, Ed's going to demonstrate if the ball is hit out to right field, he keeps his eyes on the ball as the ball is going out to the fielder. Before the fielder makes the play, he's going to get into his standing set position. Notice he's stopped, his shoulders are still square to the play, and more important, his eyes are stopped and level. From this standing set position, he can go ahead and make the call. Whether the ball is in the outfield or the infield, and you have to determine whether the ball has been caught or not caught, you want to make sure that you're stopped before you have to determine that play. If the ball has been caught, you simply move towards that play with your arm up in the air yelling, That's a catch! That's a catch! If the ball has not been caught, it's the same movement, except your arms are extended out, yelling, no catch, no catch, as you're moving towards that play. With your arms extended out like this, you're letting everybody in the ballpark know that the ball has not been caught. Here are examples of both calls. We're going out. That's a catch. Note that the base umpire shouts, I'm going out, to the plate umpire, then makes the call. Going out. Okay. 
catch, no catch. When the umpire has to determine whether it's a fair or foul ball, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. You want to make sure that you're straddling the foul line and stop before you have to determine whether that ball is fair or foul. If you determine that the ball is fair, it's a simple little step in and a point. There's no voice used on a fair ball call. Just a little step and point. On a foul ball call, it's basically the same position. You want to be straddling the foul line. You want to be stopped before you have to determine whether that ball is fair or foul. If the ball is a foul ball, you simply come up with two hands above your head yelling foul and then a little point. This way, everybody knows that the ball is foul. Foul ball. Going out. On this home run call, note that the base umpire shouts, I've got the ball, signals fair ball, then circles with his finger. Umpires, just like ball players, work as a team. In a two umpire system, verbal communication is essential because each umpire has his own jurisdictional responsibilities. Here's what they are. The base umpire is responsible for this area. The plate umpire is responsible for this area. Whenever the ball takes the base umpire to the outfield, the plate umpire is responsible for the batter runner, following him to the base he's advancing to. In this case, the play is at third. With a runner on, the base umpire's position changes, and so does the jurisdiction for fair and foul. The plate umpire becomes responsible for all fair foul calls. The base umpire's jurisdiction for a catch no catch is here. For example, the catch. with no runner on, the plate umpire will determine the calls in this area. With a runner on, the base umpire's position is in the infield, and now his jurisdiction is here. The plate umpire is responsible for the rest. The plate umpire has the initial responsibility to determine a dead ball. The base umpire echoes the call. Anytime that there's an overthrow or a bounding ball that's headed for out of play, the umpire must move in that direction. When he's determined that the ball is out of play, he simply yells, time, and awards the runners. You, second base, or the appropriate base that they are entitled. Here's how it looks. Time, time, you, you, second, second base. base. If the ball is popped up in foul ground behind the base umpire, he lets the first baseman pass him, moves with the play, remaining between the fielder and the foul line. at first is a 90 degree angle from the ball to your position. If the ball is hit to third base and the throw goes to first, your 90 degree angle position is here. On a ball hit to short, the position will be here. To second base, the position will be here. From his set position, the umpire runs to a spot on the infield dirt at a 90 degree angle to the play and the ball. He pulls his eyes ahead of the throw, gets set for the play, and makes the call. From his
his set position on the first baseline, he moves to a point on the infield dirt where he can watch the fielders and the base runner. Note that he pulls his eyes ahead of the throw. Here's the play again at regular speed. swipe tag, the umpire must recognize that the throw is off and move toward the line to see if the fielder's attempt at making the tag is successful. Note that the umpire remains standing and moves toward the line so that his view isn't blocked by the first baseman. the play again at regular speed. Untag, he's out. If the first baseman pulls his foot off the bag, the umpire signals the runner safe and motions, saying, you're off the bag. Here's the play again at normal speed. Nobody on base and the base umpire in his regular position, when there's a base hit out to the outfield, that umpire needs to come in here, get turned around ahead of the runner, and still watch the batter runner touch first base. The way we do this is a pivot. The pivot is basically a three-step movement. You want to make sure that you're in here on the infield grass, your left foot gets planted, right foot is a little jump as you watch the batter runner touch first base, and your left foot goes directly towards second base. You want to make sure that you're under control here so you don't pull yourself back from going away from the play that you need to get to. From here, it's just a simple cross step to stay ahead of the runner. If the batter runner goes back to first base, you simply cross step back to first base, turn and face the ball. You have the runner there and the outfield and the ball in front of you. This is a good position to be in. The pivot allows the umpire to get ahead of the runner and see him touch first base. If the runner goes back to first, the umpire follows so that the play is in front of him. On this pivot, with the runner going to second, the umpire must watch the ball and glance at the runner while moving into position to call any potential play. With the runner on first, the base umpire is positioned on a line tangent to the pitcher's mound between the mound and the infield cutout. The key is not getting too deep towards second base. Here's the movement to first base on the pickoff throw from the pitcher. The runner is out. The umpire moves a step or two toward the 45-foot mark, turns, and is set to call the play. On the steal attempt at second, the umpire cross steps back as he pinches in towards second base for the proper angle. In slow motion, watch how he keeps his eye on the ball as he pinches in towards second base, then pulls his eyes ahead of the throw to make the call. turns with the ball as it's fielded, moves toward first base as the fielder throws to second, and stops for the play at second in a standing set. He makes the call at second while moving toward first base and gets set to call the play there. Watch the umpire's movement on the double play. In slow motion, Note that the umpire moves in the opposite direction from the ball. It might feel unnatural for him to go that way, but that's what the reaction should be. On a base hit to left field, and the runner from first going to third, the plate umpire moves up the line into position to call the play when the ball and runner converge. The base umpire stays with the batter runner, whether the runner goes to second or remains at first.
Here's an example. Communication is very important here. Note that the plate umpire shouts to the base umpire, I've got third. I've got to be come ready. I've got third. Out. On a ball hit down the right field line, the plate umpire moves up the line to call fair or foul. If the ball is fair, the base umpire is responsible for any calls at the bases. The plate umpire is responsible for any play at the plate. Here you can see again that communication is the key. I got the ball, Eddie! I'm home, Eddie, I'm home! Fly rule situations occur with runners on first and second, or the base is loaded with fewer than two out. The infield fly rule is called after the ball has reached its apex and begins its downward flight. This lets the base runners know they're not forced to advance. The base umpire echoes the plate umpire's call. Remember, the call will be infield fly if fair when the ball is near the foul line. fly ball to the outfield, the base umpire positions himself in a straight line from the ball to the runner tagging up. To call the tag play at third, the plate umpire runs up the third baseline and shouts, I've got third if he tags, I've got third if he tags. The base umpire stays with the runner from first. I got the ball, Mike. I got third if he tags, I got third if he tags. Note that the umpire is positioned to see the catch and the runner. I got third, I got it! Oh. On an outfield fly with the bases loaded, the plate umpire positions himself in a straight line from the ball to the runner tagging up. The base umpire moves into a position open to both the ball and the runner, and he moves to call the play at third. Here with the bases loaded, watch the umpires get into position. when the umpire must decide whether the run scores or doesn't score when the third out is made. These are the possible time play situations. Runner on second, first and second, and bases loaded. Here are the two possible calls. I'm staying home, man. I'm staying okay, home. Mike. Watch the timing between the play at third and the runner crossing the plate. also use teamwork for an appeal on a check swing by the batter. Morgan! Here's the proper procedure when there's an appeal. Oh, no, he didn't! Did he say any? No, he didn't! Here's the call again. This time, the batter does swing. important things about umpiring a baseball game is calling balls and strikes. And we have a certain stance and position that we do this in. We don't just hide behind the catcher and let the ball come in. What we try to do is place ourselves with our right foot down the middle of the back, coming in, pointing towards the second baseman. Our left foot comes up into the slot. The slot is that position between the catcher and the batter. Being up in the slot allows us to see the outside corner. From this position here, we have a nice, wide, comfortable base, so we have to be able to keep our balance and get out of the way of the catcher if we need to. From here, we bend at the knees, not at the waist, to go down. We keep both heels on the ground when we bend. From here, we go straight down, and then we go into the pitch, 
into the pitch is just leaning in enough so we can see that outside corner and we're aggressively into the pitch. My head position, my chin is at the top of the catcher's head. This is basically the top of the strike zone. So from back out here, we come in with our right foot towards the second baseman, our left foot up in the slot. We bend at the knees, not at the waist, bringing our head to a position where our chin is at the top of the catcher's head. We take our elbows and lock them in at the thighs here so we're set and not drifting with the pitch coming down. Our hands are in front of our crotch. We don't put them like this taut because if the ball hits the fingers and they're tight, it has a chance of breaking our fingers. If we leave our fingers loose and a ball hits them, then we have more of a chance of giving way so we don't break our fingers and we protect our crotch at the same time. We want to be in this position, down here, aggressively into the pitch, and making sure that we're up into the slot so we can see that outside corner. Another important thing about calling balls and strikes is not drifting down as the ball comes in. We want to come in here and go from point A to point B, and I'm locked in so I can't move, drift, or duck as the ball comes in. We're going to bring Mike Pilato in to demonstrate with full equipment exactly what we're talking about as a plate umpire. Mike walks into his position with his right foot down the middle of the catcher's back. His left foot goes up into the slot in between the catcher and the batter so he can see that outside corner. From here, he goes from point A to point B, bending at the knees, and notice his back is aggressively into the pitch, but not bent over to the point where he's falling down or having to look down and fight his eyes up to see the strike zone. Step back and relax. Stepping back and relax is very important. We call 300 pitches a game. If our legs are tight for three hours, we're never going to make it. And this is our only chance to step back and give our legs a little break there. Stepping in again, he gets a nice wide base up into the slot, bending at the knees, point A to point B, and he's locked in. His elbows are locked in, his hands are protecting his crotch, his chin is at the top of the catcher's head, and he can see that outside corner from there. This is the pitch that you need to see as an umpire. Mike, can you see this pitch? Yes, I can. If Mike was to work lower, down by the catcher's head, he would have to look through the catcher's head to see this outside pitch. So we want to make sure that we're up into a position where we're looking over the catcher's head to see this outside corner. This is where pitchers make their money and want to throw to get batters out, right here. Mike, you can see this outside yes, corner? Yes, I can. Step back and relax. Another thing important is that his equipment is facing 80% towards the field. This is the protection that we carry to protect ourselves from the ball hitting the ground. If he was to work sideways and a ball was to come in, it would hit him in such a place where his equipment is not. So by keeping 80% of our body out towards the field, we can protect ourselves and still be able to do our job and see what we need to see down by the plate. This is a good, strong position for a plate umpire, and we suggest that you work hard to get into this position, and I guarantee you, you'll be able to call balls and strikes from this position here. Here's a demonstration of calling balls and strikes. Notice that the strike call is the same as the out call, but you yell strike. On the ball call, you stay down and say ball. The third strike is usually more emphatic. Here's a simple outline of the strike zone. The strike zone is the midpoint between the top of the shoulders and the top of the pants down to the knees. The strike zone is 17 inches wide, the width of the plate. Notice that the umpire opens his right foot, giving the catcher freedom to move. He follows alongside the catcher at a distance of 10 to 15 feet, all the way to the backstop, avoiding the mask as it's thrown down and watching the catcher's glove, not the ball. He signals and shouts catch or no catch. drops the bat, the umpire clears it from the plate area. The important thing here is to slide the bat along the ground 
not pick it up and throw it. There are two positions for calling plays at the plate, position A and position B. Position A, on a base hit to the outfield, the plate umpire moves left so he can view the entire field. When he sees the ball and runner will converge at the plate, he moves into position A, first baseline extended, to call the play at the plate. Position B is used on a throw from the outfield when the throw is offline, and there's a probable swipe tag. In this case, the umpire moves around the play to third baseline extended so that he's in the best position to see it tag up the line. On a wild pitch or a pass ball to his right, the umpire moves to avoid the catcher scrambling for the ball, takes a position to the left of the plate, first baseline extended, and he is then in position to call the play at home. And on a wild pitch or pass ball to his left, the umpire moves right to avoid the catcher, then sets up near the first baseline, keeping the play at home in front of him. 